it's, it's amazing to think it's been six years since that whole thing uh, went down. Yeah, yeah. Is there some uh, perspective you have now at this remove that you could... I always, in my opinion, I think the, the TBS show always felt like a little bit better fit for us. I wish he'd gotten a, a longer shot at doing The Tonight Show, and uh, I think he deserved that. But um, I, I also think... Oh, thanks. <laughs> yeah, I think we all agree with me on that. I... I crave confirmation. <laughs> and, uh, you know, uh, you know, it's um, yeah, but I but I think TBS has, has been a nice fit, and I really enjoyed doing the show there, and it felt like it could, you know, kind of comfortable fit for us, you know, for the last almost five years now, hard to believe. Yeah, and you were there for eighteen years. Ninety-seven, you joined this all-star writing writing cast at the writers' room. Robert Smigel was in there. Well, Robert had had left the show, but he would oh, come he, back. To, he would come back. He was to always sort of, and he would come back to do. The clutch bits, I don't know if you know what those are where the lips would, he would do Clinton and things like that. Yeah, yeah. clutch, Schwarzenegger. Um, yeah, I did some, a few voices, Brian McCann did a few, but Robert did about 85% of them. Like he did Clinton and Don King and all those, all the pro most popular ones. And uh, like I always loved when he you know, would do, come in and do that. And um, then he would come in to do Triumph and stuff and we would write the bits with him. But that, that was only, I never got to work with Robert on the actual writing staff. Oh, but Dino was there. Dino was a little bit before me, but he would come back. Oh, God, man, I am just so off. No, I, Dino. With Richard and you, Jesus. No, no, it's cool. I had a month to prepare the show, and this is what I... Well, I I started uh, shortly after Dino had left, um, but yeah, Louis C.K. and Dino and all those guys had worked on the the first writing staff uh, with with Conan when it started, and we would do a lot of bits that they created years after they left, like actual items and staring contests, like Louis, Louis created several of those bits and he would occasionally come back and um come into the office like when he was working on his short films and yeah. they were always super creative even though he didn't have a budget back then he would like i remember he stepped into my office once and he goes can i borrow this lamp <laughs> and I was like, sure and i was like i hope my lamp ends up in one of the films but, um, yeah it was just exciting to just see him working with what he had at the time and i love that he stuck with like the production designer he had for those little short films and it's just so cool to see you know what's happening in his career he, he's, he was always one of my favorites anyway but yeah he's he's like obviously a, a genius so well andy richter was there when you started as, yeah as andy was an old chicago improv guy too he, knew he was chicago. on improv olympic yeah. teams with us and he was always a hilarious improviser you could tell how quick he is on his feet and is he the greatest sidekick of all time i mean he, he is just thank you yeah yeah just <laughs> <laughs> greatest <laughs> male sidekick <laughs> Fun. Person, not the best male side. She's a better person. Yeah. And Eddie is always so lightning quick, you know, even back in the Chicago improv days, you know, and he would do improv with us at Upright Citizens Brigade sometimes, and he was always one of the fastest, quickest guys. You know. Did any of those guys from Chicago help you get the job in New York? Uh, they actually called me when uh, Tommy Blacha, who was a Chicago guy, had, had broken his leg. That's how I got called for the job. I, I hate to admit it, but it was actually, he, he, uh, had his leg wrapped around a bar stool and he, he fainted in a bar and broke his leg. <laughs> and it was broken so badly that he had it in this metal contraption. Yeah. And it was terrible. I felt so bad for him, but they called, they said, Tommy can't even come into work, so we need someone to come out and fill in. And I was recommended to the head writer by some of the guys. And I sent in a packet of ideas, not thinking I would get the job, but they brought me out initially just for 13 weeks. And then luckily Conan and the writers liked the stuff I was doing. And, figured out a way to keep me on, which is really nice. And I'll always be grateful to Amy Poehler uh, for the first actual character sketch I wrote was Andy's little sister, which was the sketch that she did. Right. Oh, thank you. Yeah. But she saved my butt because I was supposed to stay there 13 weeks and that sketch, she, her performance was so staggeringly great that um, it, I think that saved my job actually. <laughs> she kept you on the show. I think she did, I honestly do. So uh, I'll always be grateful. Got a picture there, yeah. yeah there's Stacy. Oh yeah, there she there's is. There's Stacy with her headgear. Yeah, we were originally going to get a real 13-year-old girl, and then we're like, could Amy look 13? And I think she really did. <laughs> <laughs> she, uh, yeah, she was just. And I feel so bad about this in retrospect. I thought, oh, we, we don't need cue cards because then people will see the joke. So I, we, she had these big, long, apocalyptic speeches in the bed, <laughs> and she had no cue cards. So it's even more impressive. Oh, she memorized the, the whole thing, which is insane. It, it was, was like insane. the same afternoon, which is completely unfair to her. But she, she uh, I still can't believe I made her do that. 